Often, when we reflect on our formative years, we think about the friendships that were the most inspiring, uplifting, and lasting. Since we go against the grain, we're going to take a look at our most questionable friendship choices on today's Mystery Men podcast. Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Mystery Men podcast. Um, I want you guys to think back to your K through 12 days and think of some of the misfit or questionable friends you had. Let's take some time to reflect on what happened, how the friendship changed or ended, and where these friends ended up. Are they the janitor of your school, your <laughs> old high school? Um, so... Let's start with you, Spleen. Uh, did you have any specific friendships that kind of stuck out in your mind? Yeah, you know, I well, I thought I tried to think through the friendships I had. I didn't have many friends that had went on the deep end. And as I was reflecting more, I realized I was the evil friend <laughs> in most of these scenarios, <laughs> which is sad. Um, but I was I will start with the with the friends I think went out went off the deep end, but then they have some redemptive stories at the, at the end, based on my research. Um, I had one friend in uh, elementary school and he, he was just very funny, like a similar sense of humor. And then really over the years, once we got into middle school, he just, it seemed like he just really jumped on the deep end and uh, you know, the people he, he was dating and uh, the people he was hanging out with, it just seemed like he kind of just lost interest in school and, um, you know, it, what's interesting is like we had this inside joke because Daddy and myself, like, we both watched in Living Color <laughs> when we were in elementary school. <laughs> and there's this one uh, scene where there's a person that uh, basically she smells really bad. And every time someone looks at her, she like looks her, t sticks her tongue out. So it was kind of like a we would talk about that. And so anytime he would see me, even three or four years later, he would do that when he would see me just as a so I was like, I saw I'm surprised he still remembered. So it wasn't ever like kind of like we stop being friends but this our circle of friends uh, diverged uh and you know i really he kind of dropped away in high school and then he came he actually switched transfer schools and everything and um then i was curious to see where he was at because he i think he just he, he didn't go go to college and he um i really don't know what happened he kind of seemed like he got lost in the in the weeds or uh, in the years uh, after we all graduated. Um, and then I find him on Facebook and he's actually, he has like two kids now and uh, he, he married this African la American lady and uh, he's working as a truck driver. Uh, but, you know, it, it didn't, it seemed like he, I mean, based on the photos, because I'm using photos as my gauge into his current life, but he seemed pretty happy. Uh, but like, you know, I remember being a little, sad to see him kind of just walk, circle away or kind of pull away, especially with the friends that he had kind of started leading him down a path. Cause I don't think he just, I don't know if he got into any type of drugs or anything, but it did seem he uh, just wasn't interested in school anymore. And um, some of the people that he was hanging out with, I knew were <laughs> pretty bad, pretty bad. So, I mean, like, did you yeah. see any specific examples of like the types of people he was hanging out with? Like, some of these, like, the, 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 I would say like the, the, what we considered emo kids back in then, like this, you know, rebellion against anything and didn't have any interest in, in school. And I remember just seeing the way he dressed, kind of trying to follow their suit, but he just didn't, uh, I was trying to think of anything specific. I think, um, probably what the people that he was <laughs> dating were questionable too. Like they're <laughs> kind of, it seemed like he kind of, I was just like, Oh, I didn't think he would be that type of person. Like just to see how he uh, hung up. Um, and then I, I would say my other friend, like he did, you know, he, so he, this was probably a little more dark. He, uh, in, a, in the senior year, it looks like he actually, um, potentially are a person. Oh, um, <laughs> and he, uh, ended up like moving out of <laughs> moving out of if we're talking about bad people he's he ended up moving out of state um i think kind of to escape any uh oh okay uh, yeah okay. that yeah, that person that, that and then he person. actually ended up moving to another country uh, back to his home home uh country of <laughs> In the in the Scandinavian area, <laughs> <laughs> and, I was like, and what you know, um, I didn't know about what was going on until afterwards. Like even one of the 
kind of a mutual friend asked him directly, hey, okay, what? I heard about what's going on. And he's just like, that's none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> Which I was like, why would he, why would he actually tell, her, tell this person the details of what, what he's being accused of? But, now, uh, do you think it was it was because of like maybe like a smaller age gap or something like he was, you know, not that much older than her, but it was like beyond the, the law? Well, it was more it was more of the um, I think they were all drinking that night. And so this this person was drunk and whatever they did to that to that person was, you know, she wasn't in her consent. And so apparently it was her, uh, him and another another mm-hmm. guy. Uh, but I only unfortunately heard the story afterwards, so I'm really oblivious to that. And then he ended up moving out of the state for college. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't, obviously, if it was, if the person had pressed it pretty hard, they would have, I think he would have been at least arrested. So it didn't seem like the person who who got attacked actually raise anything they, they they did share like a anonymous story in the yearbook so one of the yearbook stories oh was God. a <laughs> was that, that was like, which was like, was like when you think about it, it's like why would they have that story in the yearbook i want to remember this forever <laughs> yeah. she wrote her name by that story in everybody else's yearbook you know, oh like, you know I, under that picture you did story i'm sure people were like have a good summer or something like that <laughs> <laughs> I think about it. A lot. I'm like, why would you have that in your yearbook? But apparently, that story is about his the scenario that he was in. Um, obviously, they were comfortable enough to share that anonymous <laughs> in a yearbook, which I'm not you know, making light of what happened. But it was yeah. what I think what uh, impacted me the most was that I knew him since uh, middle school. And I just never saw him as being some a guy that was would do something like that. And so, yeah, for yeah. him to even for them implications, and again, I didn't know if we were actually there, but it seemed like maybe there was something they, even if it wasn't the complete like what you would see as the R word, um, it was still enough to where it wasn't right, and um, he wasn't comfortable talking about it. Uh, but you know, I looked at, look, I actually had to try to invite him as a Facebook friend. And now he's like, you know, he moved back to the States and he's uh, in Minnesota and he has actually two kids now. And he's he got married a few years ago. Uh, and and that friend's name was Elon Musk. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> <laughs> <Or> Je- <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you yeah. So, podcast and remember your friend request. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's true. He did. He didn't accept it. Maybe he, maybe he knew what my ulterior motive was. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they, uh, it, it, it seems like the, I'm, I'm hoping that the maturity and he's, he has like a, uh, two kids now and he seems like more, you know, so b- both, both people that I mentioned, they seem a very, or they seem like they've mellowed out. Um, and I would say I'm the evil friend because, <laughs> I, I don't even know if I want to admit this as the spleen, but <laughs> I'm the evil friend because I had a slightly, I, I don't know if he, he may have been slightly mentally challenged. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Slightly? What does that mean? <laughs> well, like Forrest Gump, you know, he was just below <laughs> the line. That's not slight. <laughs> Okay. Just out a tie of shoelaces for him. <laughs> well, no, the first sign, like when he was running for three days straight. <laughs> so he, so I, I, I he, we were, were friends, but like I would, uh, I would, I stole one of his toy bikes uh. from him. <laughs> God. You stole from a mentally handicapped kid? That he was, was Forrest Gump he level was. of handicap. Forrest Gump. Wow. So, I mean, Forrest Gump had his own Apple company, so you know he did pretty well for himself. That's true. He took care of his own needs. <laughs> I'm hoping that the same thing happened to him. But he's he, a functional human. That's the truth. Exactly. So he, yeah, he brought that for show and tell, and I said I wanted to play with it. And he's just like, no, you know, I don't want to share it right now. So I went Wait, do walk. it in his voice because I remember he used to do his voice a lot. <laughs> no, please. 
<laughs> no spleen. I don't want to share that toy with you right now. And so he put it in his he put it in his locker, and luckily the lockers are not locked. You just can uh, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> Conveniently for me, in my for theory. me, for, 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 for evil friends, it's, it makes it easy to steal things. So, I, I I took it out of his locker, and he couldn't find it. And then one time, the firefighters came to visit our school, and they gave everyone stickers. And so I took his. Wait, shouldn't then, we be interviewing your friend as opposed to Spleen? <laughs> I happened to him. He's probably he's probably like you know you know lost everything because I stole his sticker and it all started with that little motorcycle yes. toy. So, wow! So he so but I gave him the sticker back. I just pretended that it was my sticker and I gave it to him because oh yeah, that him. was the twist in the story, right? Yeah, I gave the sticker back, but he thought it was just me giving my sticker up. So he's just like, what a good friend. <laughs> but it really wow. was just being missed. So I think I was just like, man, I was such an evil person back then. And uh, in, in, a, in a serious note, I don't think I was saved, honestly, at that time. And I really had no moral <laughs> ground to say like, oh, yeah, that, that's jacked up, Jeff. I was just yeah. like, well, I wanted that sticker. I wanted that bike. And he had it. So I took it. So I took it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it felt good about it. <laughs> now, how old were you at that time? That was I was funny. in uh, second grade. Second. <laughs> yeah. This was last year. <laughs> this was just two years ago. <laughs> I don't know why I showed up at the school when they had the firefighters there, and I wanted to be there. Wait, that's where my motorcycle went? And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it was. Um, I, can't, I can't think of it if I did anything else evil to my friends over the years, but that was the he just he jumped at or those memories of that poor guy probably stuck out most. <laughs> during yeah. That time. Well, um, I know. So for the purposes of this podcast, I'm gonna I'm gonna recount my my story, but I'm gonna name my my. <laughs> My friend victim. Chase, my victim Chase. <laughs> um, so uh, with Chase, I uh, I actually <laughs> met him in. Uh, <laughs> I met him in fourth grade. I think it was fourth grade. Yeah, it was like he lived in my neighborhood. So we grew up in the same neighborhood together. Attended all the same schools, uh, at least until a certain point, which I'll get to later. Um, and we rode the bus together. So we were always like palling around, you know, riding bikes together and everything around the neighborhood. And uh, his family was a little bit different than my family. Um, his mom seemed to be Christian, I think. Um, I remember her buying me a, uh, a Stephen Curtis Chapman uh, tape, cassette tape for nice. one of my birthdays. <laughs> um, and I think she tried to you know, be that kind of influence on him uh, while he was growing up. Um, his dad, on the other hand, uh, seemed to be some kind of veteran of some sort. I don't know what war he fought in. Uh, it could have been Vietnam, but like he just seemed to be very uh, like he wouldn't talk much. Uh, a lot of times, the only time I would see him is if he was coming out and he was mad about something <laughs> and he was like about to yell at at my friend Chase or you know, at me, I think one time I got yelled at by him. Uh, but like, I remember this one specific time, uh, Spleen and I were actually riding bikes with him together one day, one day in our neighborhood. And I think, I think he had been grounded for something. Like he was, <laughs> he was only allowed to be in his driveway and like play basketball or something. But he basically, you know, he was just like him in his driveway and we were shooting around for a little bit. But he was like, oh, you know, we can go ride bikes. It's okay. So, like, so we went and rode bikes around the neighborhood. And we came back much later um, to his dad standing in the garage um, waiting for him uh, with a two by four in his hands. Oh. And, and he was basically like just kind of tapping it like you would see in a movie, just like tapping it in one and hand. You guys like, just did you guys just slowly drive away? Well, as like, as you know, Spleen <laughs> and I were like, uh, we didn't know what to Whoa. say. We were just like <laughs> silent. And this is just to the best of my memory. So Spleen, if you remember it, yeah. any details. Well, his, his, well he, he, that, his father really cre or scared me because he, did, just as Shoveler had described. But he, his, his line was, this is going to be waiting for yeah. you and Sad. 
<laughs> he, was, he was referring to the two by four and then he goes inside and I was like, I was asking Chase, are you going to be okay? <laughs> Did you pedal Peter's away? Lean already knew the answer to that question. I'm gonna have to go inside now. <laughs> you guys just oh leave Chase and drive off with your Stephen Curtis Chapman music playing in the car. <laughs> Saddle up your horses. Uh, we gotta go, guys. You know, yeah. when you look through the rearview mirror and you see him with a two by four just beating Chase. <laughs> Saddle up your horses. <laughs> <laughs> Explain it. I rode off fast. Yes. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. he, like, we were in shock. Like I think he like slowly. You could just see him slowly walking in, going to his ultimate fate of like a beatdown. And oh, you know we no. couldn't do anything about it. We were just like, uh, you know, like we didn't know what to say or do. And his dad was just like that all the time. Like yeah. I remember I went over and I had like this. <laughs> I don't know if anybody on the podcast is going to remember this, but it was just like some obscure like TIE fighter uh, Star Wars video game. And it was like a demo. It wasn't even a full game. It was oh, a demo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we used to play it all the time because, I, you know, my parents weren't going to buy anything like that for me. So, like, so I brought the demo disc. I'm talking about a floppy disc over to his you know house and we put it into his computer and we were playing with it. And I think his dad needed to use the computer or something and he just started like getting so mad like he just started yelling at us and i i couldn't get the the floppy disk out of the drive i was like trying to get it out and it was stuck or something because it just slightly bent you know the uh the little sleeve on it so uh, we were you know it was just like a he just seemed like to be a very scary guy and then his mom was the complete opposite of that like you know very cool mom to hang out with and you know, she seemed to be kind of with the times. So it was just like, you know, just a stark difference. But um, we were close friends until about the seventh grade. And around that time, we started kind of going on different paths. And I, he started to hang out with some pretty bad kids. And, and I was always like throughout the years, I was always kind of trying to emphasize what a good Christian was. I, I didn't know any better. And I was just trying to, you know, you know, tell him, hey, you know, you shouldn't do that because of this and that and because of this. And um, <laughs> so at one point, I I kind of had it with like him hanging out with these these pretty bad kids. And I was like, hey, you know, you're going to have to choose between, you know, those kids are hanging out with me because I just I don't think it's the right thing or, you know, some of the things you guys are doing are right. And uh, ultimately, he just continued to do it. And I, I don't know if this is the triggering thing that split us up but so you know ultimately it led to the like this band trip and they basically they got to roam around the mall for a little bit and i think he was with his friends and he ended up shoplifting something uh from one of the stores i, I don't know if it was hot topic or what but i think he's, <laughs> he, he <stopped laughs> they must, i don't know how they're in business with all <laughs> the shoplifting that goes on in that place so so basically he shot this so then you know i was like okay that's it like i i gave you the the option i i really just don't think you're headed down a, a good path anymore and i remember there was this lunch i was like the the king of the nerds at that time like we all sat at one table no. and i was for some reason yeah i know it's, it's surprising but uh I, I basically, I was like, I don't want to sit with you anymore because he used to sit with our group. So I, I got up and moved down the table to another seat. And then he got up and moved and sat right across from me. And then I, I got up again and moved further down and he got up and moved and sat right in front of me. And I dun, finally, dun, dun. I got up, I was so angry that I reached over the table and just shoved him off of his seat. And he fell to the ground, fell backwards to the ground in front of all of these people. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, like, it still haunts me to this day that I ever reacted that way. Like, I feel horrible because, you know, it just went, you know, after that point, that was pretty much the last time I talked to him. But I would hear things throughout the years um, that happened to him. Like, you know, I, one of them was, you know, kind of the stuff surrounding this, you know, shoplifting incident. I think he did other things after that. Um, but other things included... Uh, you know, in later on in high school, you know, at this point, we hadn't really talked or were friends for a couple of years. And uh, we had this one big fire drill. And we like all had to go out onto the school line, 
Uh, and it was for a really long time this time around. And we were all like, why are we waiting out here for this long? It usually doesn't take this long. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it turned out that it was a real fire. And it was set in a bathroom Uh-oh. by this kid, Chase. Oh, dang. And he was essentially kicked out of school. I, I guess he went to like a private school. This is all like, you know, everything I heard. He went to either a private school or one of those, you know, special schools where you have to like go for the remainder of high school if you're kicked out as, you know, regular Professor school. Professor Xavier School for the Gifted. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm surprised the uh, two by four didn't work. Like, put them yeah, on. Yeah, you know, that, yeah. that, that yeah. didn't work. Seth he got home, it was probably like a, a logging truck waiting for him outside. <laughs> Your telephone pole. It's like a metal bat now. He made a machine at this point yeah. that just does it automatically. <laughs> <laughs> this will be waiting for you in the garage. <laughs> Basically, you know, I, I looked at, I've looked into him over the course of the last several years just to check up on him and see what he's up to and like he basically he moved down to Austin, Texas. Classic. Uh, and he he started a band. <laughs> all right. That's about right. <laughs> and and he going. I guess he plays yeah, he, he, he he's very liberal. And yeah. uh, I've seen some of his posts are very liberal. He wears a, a Does he wear eye makeup? eye makeup? <laughs> Uh, I think he was going down that path during the high school years when Green Day was big, uh, nice. because he was a big Green Day fan at that time. Um, but yeah, like uh, every now and then I'll, I'll look him up and yeah, he definitely, it seems like that's his main thing is being in a band and, you know, supporting his other band friends. Like, uh, and I have listened to some of his music. Uh, I actually listened to some today just to kind of, you know, remind myself of, of this guy, but like, uh, yeah, he seems to be doing decently as far as a musician, but not that decently because I looked at his uh, gig town, gigtown.com. He has like a, a page for his band uh, and there's like zero reviews on it. <laughs> and, and, and some of the website links don't lead to anything. Uh, so I'm guessing, you know. All right. There, so. Maybe you should go down to Austin and sit across from him one day at a cafeteria or something and see if you can <laughs> <laughs> get him to talk to you. Push him, push him. <laughs> no, I, you let, know, let him push you. Let him push oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Make, just make up for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, honestly, that, that's like, I always feel so bad because I'm like, you know, if maybe if I would have kept, you know, trying to, you know, <laughs> nurture that friendship and, you know, make uh, amends maybe it would have went a different way but you know that's just, oh, you ain't uh, catching no crackhead man you ain't catching no crackhead <laughs> he's probably looking at that fire he started in the bathroom like maybe this will get uh shoveler's, <laughs> shoveler's attention another school like hearing about this fire <laughs> like whoever started that fire should really get kicked out of school and never have fun again <laughs> He's like standing behind you with tears coming down his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I did it for you. I did I it for you. The, the fire spells out shoveler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Chase. <laughs> um, you know, I had a, a friend <laughs> that, uh, like I can't, I used to come up with like this is all middle school. I and I used to come up with like names for everybody in our group, and this particular friend. Uh, he was kind of chubby. He was just like the <laughs> kind of the fatty of our group. So you named him Fatso? So for whatever. I, <laughs> so I, I him named Fatso? him Chubbs. Oh, I named Chubbs. him Chubbs. <laughs> oh, so like everybody in the group would call him Chubbs from that point on. And he took it like a champ. Like he didn't <laughs> complain about it one time or anything. He probably cried himself to sleep every <laughs> night after that. But like, you know, uh, in our school district, there was two high schools. So you know, he went to one and I ended up going to the other. So I didn't like uh, really see him or talk to him after that point. And I remember the summer before we started, he, he gave me a call and I just, I wasn't good at, you know, kind of cultivating these friendships, you know, if I didn't see people, you know, pretty often. And so I was like, you know, I was kind of like, yeah, okay, well, yeah, we'll talk, you know, and then we never ended up calling each other again or talking much after that. And I, we lost track of him. And uh, like years later, uh, one of the other friends in our group that we kind of 
were linked up because of uh, Chubbs. Like we we remained friends and really good friends until this very day. But we actually went in search for Chubbs and we went to his old house and tried to like see if his family still lived there and things like that. And <laughs> Can like Chubbs his... come out and play? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was like a new family. I guess they had moved he's, at a certain point. He's like, eating right yeah, now. Come back play. later. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so like, I think he ended up moving, you know, someplace else in the state. And, and then I actually, I think I found him on Facebook and I tried reaching out to him and he just, there was no response. Like he wouldn't respond to me. I think he was like a technician for like Lexus or something. Like he was a mechanic or somebody who worked for the Lexus you know, mechanic shop or something. And, but he just, he never responded to me. So I felt kind of sad about that. I always, I felt bad about, you know, kind of labeling that <laughs> and, and then never, you know, rectifying it. But, you know, maybe one day I'll get my chance. Do you look skinny in his profile pic or? He looked skinnier. He, he still had that kind of baby fat, you know, face, you know, but like, but he looked a lot skinnier than he was. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe I encouraged him. Maybe I should take it that way. Maybe he, uh, you know, took the, uh, the insult and used it. And then like the, you know, the Rocky music started playing and he started to work out or something after that. But, <laughs> so uh what about you invisible boy do you have anything that comes to mind yeah i, re I remember i me and uh blue raja had a friend we grew up with so just to kind of give you some backstory our parents actually knew each other um or th they grew up together and they you know once they both grew up and had their kids we would visit them you know about once a year every summer uh, and there was just one of their kids specifically stuck out to us just because he, he had such a high, you know, esteem for his dad, but it was almost to the point where it was just like absolutely annoying. Uh, <laughs> just to give you, just to give you some context, uh, I'm going to call this kid. His name was Joyce and his dad's name was Joy. <laughs> So, so, so you can see you, you, I wonder, you, you, I wonder. you can see that the you can see that the uh the name of the son was just a derivative of the dad's name, right? Like it was just like kind of a continuation. I'm so glad Invisible is not in charge of masking at the Pfizer courts because yeah, he would yeah. be the worst. <laughs> <laughs> all right go on go on anyway, yeah. and joy thanks for that by the way go ahead anyway so you used to always tell me and blue raja these you know great stories about his dad at first like, he always had like the newest stuff like he like that was another thing was like you know he had the newest like uh you know n64 or things like that so uh it always um you, you know, it, it, it kind of, you would always be like, man, I kind of want to go to uh, Joyce's house because he always has, you know, the new stuff. And um, he would always talk about how his dad bought him this or that, I guess. But anyway, w one of the <laughs> main things was that he would always tell us that, you know, he would be like, man, when my dad's rich, we're going to get a mansion. We're going to have an indoor pool. He would always talk about this indoor pool that he never, he never had <laughs> at the moment but it was just one of those wait, wait he was bragging about stuff in the future pretty much <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow <laughs> he's pretty bold <laughs> he was ahead of his time he never jumped into a regular pool because he was like uh, really self-conscious about how fat he was yeah, uh, he, yeah, he would always you know, swim with the. Is off. that why the yeah. indoor <laughs> pool was necessary? <laughs> Complete coverage. He, he, he was one of the. He, he was one of those kids who uh, swam with the t-shirt on. Like he would never take his shirt off. I guess like it was like whenever we would go to the pool. But anyway, um, so yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I did that for a period of time during my <laughs> years, and now I'm just over it. So I'm fine with my fatness. <laughs> I've we accepted myself. The, I mean, yeah, me and uh, me and Invisible were fat too. As <laughs> <It's like>, oh. a <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't get any judgment from us. But all right. <laughs> and our solution was never to try to get a private indoor pool, like you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Um, uh, so, you know, over the years, we kind of lost touch. Like we just quit seeing them after a while. And, you know, we never um, understood why. I mean, like my parents would try to contact them. And then we found out that uh, they had moved um, 
uh, move from the state they were in. So, you know, a couple of years passed by and we still hadn't heard from them. And, you know, eventually my mom found out someone who knew them. And we actually found out the dad got charged with uh, money laundering. Oh, uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so he actually had to uh, leave the country. So once he left the country, like he wasn't allowed to be in the country anymore. And um, once we had found, I, I guess after that had happened, uh, his wife and kids had kind of moved to a different state. Um, I don't know, maybe to be next to family or whatever. They didn't want to move the kids out of the U.S., Uh, so we just kind of lost, uh, (laughs) we just kind of lost contact, uh, with that whole family. And it was actually just by, uh, coincidence that my parents were in India a couple years ago and they ran into, uh, joy just, you know, uh, like just on the street, (laughs) like they, they were just, you know, is he homeless now? No, no, no. So, so. (laughs) You mean like two billion people that <laughs> ran into this one dude money money laundering? Yeah, so he wasn't maybe homeless. he was like, "Hey, you guys want me to wash your money? I can take care of that." <laughs> he wasn't homeless, but uh, you know the I don't know uh, what he did whenever he was here, but he was really big into computers. Um, but anyway, now he's in India and he's not doing anything with computers. He owns a fine art school, like a music school like a like wow. a dance studio kind of thing so does it have uh, an indoor pool in well india? Yeah, that's what i was thinking i was like do you think he ever got his indoor pool but there can't be any houses in india with indoor pools like i just oh, I, there is dude what are you talking really? about I, yeah. I, like how about outdoor pools <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure to go. Next time I go <laughs> investigating <laughs> Google Maps, I will look for you. Yeah, I was just like, anyway, so uh, that was one of the things. And I guess uh, he now lives there. And from what I heard, um, I think him and his son, I mean, you know, obviously him and his son were close, but I think his son, from what I heard, might be moving to India to kind of work with his dad. I don't know what they have in the mix, but um those are did, uh, did you uh, f- uh, add his son as a friend? On I couldn't find him. Facebook? I looked. I looked, but I couldn't oh, find man. him. Yeah. So okay. his dad, he used to, he used to, <laughs> he used to say something like, "I remember him telling my dad one time he would like, uh, you know, like lease lease really nice cars. That way, it made him look like more successful than, uh, you know, what, uh, what he was. was. Yeah. When yeah. he would go see clients and things, he would like." drive the nicer cars i guess so it was kind of a i don't know it wasn't that surprising how everything kind of turned out have you ever asked your dad how they met this guy no so so him his the dad and my mom used to be neighbors in india when they were growing up so that's uh, how they knew each other yeah and invisible's dad's a drug dealer so he needs a lot of <laughs> cash <laughs> sweet cash but, but what's interesting was uh from what i remember uh joy's dad got banned from the u.s also he had broken some law with money also so oh dang wow so it runs in the family yeah, so it's like, you know, it's kind of the um, family business. The family business, <laughs> yeah. Generational. Yeah. Generational deportation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One day, son, all this will be yours. <laughs> all you will need away. to do is be deported. <laughs> it will be taken away. Yeah, all this will be yours. <laughs> take it away. As far as the eye can see, as far as the sun sets. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's where you'll be going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mufasa telling his son. No, that's where we're going to be living together by ourselves amongst the skeletons. <laughs> so um, I, I think there, I, and maybe Blue Roger, maybe you can shed some light on, I, I think I remember you guys had some friend that lived in your neighborhood that you guys were close to for a while. And, uh, and invisible, we were talking about that a little bit earlier before the call, but, um, you guys, can you share anything about that? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. So he was actually, I had uh, met him first at like a, uh, like a daycare a long time ago. Um, and w- this was before, uh, our family had moved. Kinder and, care. Yeah, kinder care. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Quality establishments. Uh, so we became friends in kinder care. And then, like, um, we were having our house built at our uh, parents' current residence. 
And while uh, we were checking on like, you know, the construction of the house and looking around and then he came over and, you know, he's like, hey, you're living here now? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then we just, yeah, we found out that he lives across the street. So um, we'll, uh, for the sake of the story, we'll call him Pong. He's an Asian guy. Uh, <laughs> Man, this is amazing. Pong. <laughs> Well, not is... King. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, we're definitely gonna get banned on Facebook. <laughs> so me and Pong were, uh, I mean, really good friends. Uh... <laughs> me and Pong. We gotta make T-shirts that say "Me and Pong" on it. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna mute, I'm gonna mute myself. So me. Then would go over to Pong's at his sister's place, and then um, <laughs> we would. What was it? Was his sister's name Ping? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll call her Ping. Yeah. All right. All right. There you go. We got it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're, so you we're, ran over to Pong's yeah, house. We got a Ping in Pong's house. <laughs> uh, we'd uh, play video games, or we'd go like. There's be times when <laughs> this was a. Uh, this was an Invisible Boys idea once. Like there was like one rule, like their parents their parents had a pool and they had a rule like, Hey, like no swimming when we're not at home. And we're like, All right, all right. That's a good rule. That's a good rule. Yeah. yeah. So we went to Ping Pong's house and uh, Invisible Boys like, Hey, let's go to the pool. <laughs> 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 is that what his voice really sound like? It doesn't sound like a pong. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was Invisible Boy. Yeah, that was Invisible Boy's idea. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that sounds like his voice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, this was back in the day when uh, wrestling was big. And so I don't know if you remember this wrestler, Scotty Too Hotty. He had. Oh, like, yeah. His thing <laughs> to move was the worm, where he'd hop on one leg and spell out worms. So he'd be like, W. O R M, and then he'd do the word. He really took the time to spell out a whole word with oh, like by hopping. Yeah, by like uh, yeah, the and the, like the crowd would just like yell like you know chant like W O R M, and then he would okay, do okay. his move. Well, so okay. <laughs> invisible boy outside the pool, he's hopping on one leg, which is like unsafe to begin with. It's just like outside the like, right. Right on the edge of the pool, like W O, oh, oh, oh. and then he does a big cannonball, and like as he's doing all this, like the parents like come home early. <laughs> no, it was the uncle. It was the uncle. Was the uncle. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. Like, what are you guys doing? The floating. Uncle told the parents that we, you know, their their family gets in trouble. Ping pong gets in trouble because of the invisible boy just uh, just jumping the pool. But anyway, so like, but this is like, you know, so we're good, like, good friends with them, and um, but there's like some like family issues. Like Ping was pretty spoiled as a um just a spoiled kind of girl and then like yeah. her dad had uh <laughs> some anger issues so one time i don't remember what the reason for but you know their dad really got mad at pong and had this like uh one of ping's like baby dolls and uh <laughs> and she started trying to smack pong with the doll like i don't i don't remember why he got so angry but he was like really trying to beat at uh, Pong with the dog. Me and me and Invisible Boy were there, and like oh, man. Pong, uh, and Blue, Blue Raja was standing right behind I Pong like, whenever. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I was kind of in, like too close to the. I was in the what we'd call like the danger zone. So like Pong would kind of like was running around and kind of scramble behind me. And, like Pong's dad just like he did not know. Like he just was like blind with rage. So like, he's like smacking me and. and <laughs> <laughs> Like, what is going on? <laughs> Pong dodged like every hit and it hit Blue Roger. It was like, it was, like Mayweather yeah. defense. <laughs> Eventually, like, I guess, like, uh, I mean, it's, it's sad to say, but Pong and his, uh, or Pong's dad and mom got divorced later on. And, like, you know, he's like, he moved out, but he was like the main, like, breadwinner of the house. So, like, they couldn't. <laughs> Was her name Bing or Bong? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, was Pong, what was Pong's dad's name? 
Ja, auch noch Bong. <lacht> Bong und Bing. Und Bing und Bong. <lacht> oh mein <my> Gott. <gosh. lacht> Again, another bang up job at the masking going on here today. <lacht> I mean, like, yeah, so when Bong left, uh, Bing couldn't really afford the house anymore. We're all family. <lacht> <laughs> so Bing, Ping, and Pong all had to leave. <laughs> You're doing amazing. Keep it up. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> and, uh, they all moved, and uh, you know, we, I mean, me and uh, Pong are still like friends. I mean, like we we actually worked at an electronic store together at one point, um, oh, wow. and then he. Uh, I think he moved to like DC and he actually reached out to me like not too long ago, like messaging me about this guy at the electronic store that we worked at who got like he got arrested. And we're like, oh yeah, I remember that guy. And then like we started talking about other stuff and catching up. I guess I think he's back in uh, Dallas now, but um, no he's, yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, he was kind of a like a little bit of a, I mean, he was smart, but he was like a slacker in school and like kind of got yeah. up with the wrong crowd. And I would say he's still kind of part of that, like, you know, Dallas, like, uh, party crowd or whatever. But from, I mean, from my understanding, he's, like, doing, I mean, fairly well for himself or he's, like, not. Is he married with kids? No. Or just, like, he's still a, single? Yeah, he's still single. So. Okay. Yeah, I don't know, like, too much of, like, what he's, like, doing now in terms of, like, work or um, anything like that. But, I mean, we're just kind of, like, casual friends on Facebook. But. Um, he's not like super active on there, um, but yeah, I mean, him and then like a lot of like, I mean, his friends, which are like also like some of my friends, like even like, like my grade. I mean, there's just all like, just a bunch of now. You know, uh, in, prior to the call, I was just kind of uh, talking about uh, some of if his Invisiboy's experiences with the Bong family. <laughs> but um, he had mentioned a couple other things that had happened over the years that um, I wanted to, wanted yeah, to hear will be about the, again. Bong will be the last name. So there's Ping Bong and Pong Bong and then Bing Bong. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I want to see this. Just keep this one straight. I remember just more so kind of the, uh, the effects of, uh, you know, as uh, Blue Raja was saying, the divorce, just because – you know, kind of growing up, I didn't, you know, our, our parents didn't really know that many people who were divorced, I guess. I mean, that was just kind of maybe a cultural thing or something. But I remember like whenever they were going through the divorce, uh, Pong's mom had asked our mom if Blue Raja could testify in court that he got beat with the doll head. <laughs> my mom was like, no, <laughs> was like, no I don't, I'm not comfortable with that. I don't want him to be attacked, you know, like once he leaves the court. Or that was my mom's reasoning. I, I, didn't, I didn't know, you know, if that would happen, I guess. But yeah, I remember when they had, um, uh, you know, when they had ended up, you know, separating or something, I saw, um, you know, the dad at one of the, because I used to, you know, play basketball at different apartments. So I remember just walking through, a um, uh, lawn, like the laundry room of one of these apartments and seeing the dad in there. And, uh, he was a nice guy, but I mean, it's like, what do you say? I guess kind of like, I mean, I'd like talk to him a little bit. I was like, oh, I mean, I'm sure after you checked for any dolls in his hands or anything. Yeah, he, he was in his Bruce Banner mode, but you know, at any moment. Yeah. You know, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> <laughs> How did Ping turn out? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the it. younger sister. She went to college and I think she got like a degree in like finance or something, but I don't know what she's doing after that, yeah, okay. I guess. Um, <laughs> money <laughs> laundering with Joyce's dad. <laughs> <laughs> she, well, uh, she had a relationship, more so a like relationship issue going on. Yeah, she did have a like, lot of relationships. Her ex boyfriends uh, are pretty crazy. So. Um, I think at one point, like one of her ex-boyfriends, like beat up her other ex-boyfriend in front of like their house, which was like you know across the street from us. So we could just uh, yeah. <laughs> we could just hear hear like some shouting and just like you know the 
the sound of maybe a, a punch or a fist hitting a face. Like Kung Fu. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I remember, <laughs> I remember, because uh, we heard it outside the uh, house. Uh, <laughs> and Blue Raja was like, do you hear that? And I was like, I was like, I, I was just like, no, nah, it's probably nothing. And I remember just turning up the TV and, and watching TV. <laughs> and then the next day I get to school and this this kid who got beat up, like he was he was kind of my friend. So he like saw me and he has like all black eyes across his face and everything. Yeah. And he was just like, he was like, uh, dude, invisible. I got beat up uh, outside your house. You didn't hear me. And I was like, dude, I think I might have heard you. He was just like, why don't you come out and help? I was just like, first of all, this guy is like twice my size. I'm like, there's no need for both of us to get beat up. <laughs> <laughs> Always the selfless one. Yeah. The boy. And maybe applying a lot of logic. Yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, a show was on. And <laughs> second of all, I remember, I I remember people were making fun of him. <laughs> people were making fun of him because he got beat up. And he was like, uh, he was like, well, I didn't know we were going to get in a fight. <laughs> and then someone, uh... was like, someone was like, dude, the guy was punching him. What were you waiting for him to say? I challenge you to a duel. <laughs> and slap him with some gloves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, moving on, Mr. Furious, uh, what about you? Did you have any peculiar friends growing up, or did you find out? Uh, yes. <laughs> I don't think I turned out this crazy because of my perfect isolated childhood. Yes, I had yeah. one, and his name was Keith. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a name that you know doesn't that sound like a, a, tr- a ruffian <laughs> yeah. yeah so like i'll just basically you know when i was growing up there we lived really close to my elementary school and so that was at a time of life where you could like literally come home from school and then you know get a snack and then go ride your bikes and troll around the neighborhood and there was kids that also go to the elementary school around that lived close by so we'd all kind of gather play football or just hang out or something at the playground stuff like that uh but there was a kid down the street his name was keith and keith keith's parents uh i don't know how this arrangement worked out but because we were in the same grade and because uh, we became friends my parents were just like yeah you know after school if they have to work late or something then you could just go over there and I think his mom would keep an eye on me, you know, for you know, sum of money or something like that. There was a babysitting yeah, yeah. arrangement going on. But anyway, so we started to develop a friendship. But pretty soon I started to realize Keith was not always doing things on the up and up. Like he had a big family. So he, stuff he would do and his parents are not really like involved a lot. Yeah. They were like the typical parents that just kind of like. Come on, here's a cookie for your snack. All right, we'll see you in a couple hours <laughs> at, at lunchtime. <laughs> so we were going bike riding and stuff like that. And so Keith knew a kid down the street. His name was William. <laughs> and uh, William was another ruffian that we had to kind of like associate with. But like, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just kind of like, I needed some friends. So I started hanging out with Keith and William. And like, I remember the first time I realized this might not be a good idea is like there's a creek that goes behind all the houses back there. Hmm. So Keith's like, hey, let's go down to the, the creek with William. So we went down there and we're like walking through the woods, whatever, we get to the creek and William like goes behind these logs that are down there by the creek and he goes behind, pushes some stuff aside and he pulls out this pack of cigarettes oh, that man. His, he stole from his dad or something like that. Wow. And he snuck it down there because he lived really close to the creek. And he's like, yeah, let's smoke them, guys. And I'm being an idiot I am. I was like, uh, all right. And so proceed to learn in second grade how to smoke cigarettes. Second grade. Second, second grade, grade, man. Second wow. grade. That's like a, a straight out of like a old 90s like thing. Yeah. Like a Saved by the Bell situation. Right. <laughs> yeah, I failed miserably. I wouldn't have been friends with Zach and Kelly. I would have been already. <laughs> Yeah, so that's my <laughs> oh, first experience man. with Keith was that. And then, like, you know, pretty soon things started. Like, we would do sleepovers and stuff. Yeah. And Keith was always, like, you know, it just there was just stuff, like, like just stuff you would, like, not want your kids to be exposed to. Generally, if I was exposed to it, it's because of Keith. 
was in the room or involved in some shape or manner. Like one time, <laughs> it was so dumb. One time, he was sleeping over at our house because my parents are like, yeah, that, you know, come over, we'll do sleepovers, whatever. And we decide there's like, this is like third or fourth grade at this point. We decide that there's a, there's a girl or two in our school. We're starting to kind of like, oh, let's, let's, let's like, you know, we like <laughs> girls or whatever. And so we decided to write a letter to one of the girls. And Key starts writing some of this nonsense in there. Like, like it was not appropriate material oh that you should be sending to another fourth grader. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> But they're like, you know, in my mind, it's like, eh, it's just a joke. We're just goofing around, whatever. This is my at my house, right? Yeah. And we write this stuff together. And then, like, we never talk about it again. Well, apparently, Keith mails this girl the letter. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. And he went to his house and had the foresight and audacity to put it into an envelope, stamp it. Somehow oh. we found her address. And I didn't know anything about it. Please tell me he didn't put a return address on it. Oh, of course it's signed (laughs) Keith and Shane. No. (laughs) Of course it is. (laughs) Because at the time, I'm like, I didn't know anything. I was just like, ha ha. I thought it was a joke, whatever. And he mails it. And so then like, (laughs) like a week later goes by and all of a sudden I get called down to the principal's office. And the principal, and then I go in there, and dad's there. I'm like, oh, oh what no, happened? No, I don't know what no, happened. Man. And the teacher, the principal proceeds to say, this is the letter we received. He has your name on it. Did you send this? I was like, no, I didn't send this. It was, it was Keith. I told him <laughs> three months It was Keith. Keith. It was Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Did your dad believe you? I don't know. To this day, I'm not sure if he does or not. But, like, oh, he wasn't God. about to, like, contradict, I guess. Or at least he didn't. I don't know what happened. Otherwise, I didn't get in trouble. But he got suspended. So I know Ooh. something got happened, whether it's because my other behaviors in school exemplified something non-Keith-esque. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Keith gets in trouble. So after that... Keith was like a, a persona non grata at our house. He, oh, my parents man. were like, don't hang out with Keith. <laughs> <laughs> that was the rule. So, but I was still like, well, you know, at that age, you're like, man, no, I want to still, there, there was no big deal. You know, you think you can handle that sort of stuff. Right. And I remember the last time I really started to hang out with Keith was like, my parents, I was telling my parents I was going to go for a bike ride. And they're like, don't go play with Keith. <laughs> and I literally was like, okay. And then I rode my bike to Keith's house. <laughs> Straight to Keith's house. <laughs> and so, it, and so I had glasses at the time, right? And we're playing. And Keith's just ch- chunking the ball up in the air. And I'm like catching it, right? And I'm not very good at it, but I'm catching it. And, he, and I chunk it to him. And he chunks it, he chunks it up in the air. And I totally miss it. It hits me in the glasses and breaks my glasses oh, in no, half. No. This is like, <laughs> this is like a this is uh, like in the Red 80s. Rider BB gun scenario. Yeah, here. but this is like in the 80s, like in yeah, early yeah, late 80s when glasses are like yeah. they're like three hundred, four hundred dollars at that point, you know, for yeah. even for kids' pairs. And so I'm like, with I have a, p- a pair of glasses broken in half, and I'm riding my back, <laughs> <laughs> riding home. Like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? And so like my parents, I tell my parents like, yeah, I fell off my bike and broke my glasses, and they're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> they still beat you. They, they, yeah, of course I got a beating for that, but like still, I mean, like that was kind of the point. I was like, okay, every time my parents tell me not to hang out with them, I do, and then I get in trouble. So I started to kind of get. Annoyed. And then, like, you know, we moved into junior high in that time frame. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we ended up moving. So that kind of separated that. So I haven't talked to Keith or heard yeah. from him or anything since that point because we went to different high schools and junior highs and stuff like that. No, even in right. junior high, we went to the same junior high. But for some reason, we just never really connected. I ended up making some other friends and moving on beyond that. Um, so, you know, I think overall, the experience I learned, I mean, like, did some really stupid things. And like, I think that that's what you have to be careful with some people you get influenced by at a younger years. Cause that stuff really carries forward, man. Yeah. You, you always, those things you get exposed to early on can always be bad, especially parental relationships you see and mm-hmm. things like that. So it's not necessarily going to just stop there at childhood, but 
I got yeah, away. Yeah. I got away pretty good, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I, I now I kind of think you know now that I I have kids and I I start to think about okay, I don't think I would ever like the same things I did back then, like going to people's house for sleepovers. Yeah, I, I just don't think I would ever be able to do that. I mean, um, and I just as a general rule, and I, I'm sure you know you guys probably feel the same way too. But yeah, yeah, there's just, there's always things that happen, you know, like, like this type of stuff. And I know, it, you know, some people would probably be like, eh, you shouldn't worry about that. But man, you know, I, yeah. I remember being exposed to a lot of different things that just weren't of my faith or, you know, of the, the way that my parents were trying to teach me to walk. And they didn't know, you know, any better at that point in time. But, um, but yeah, that's definitely something. And, and that's the thing, you know, now we kind of have been exposed to that as like a first generation of uh, Indian guys that have grown up in this, uh, this country and stuff. And, you know, we can kind of, we're able to pass that down to our kids as far as, you know, the lessons we've learned. And hopefully, you know, we can learn from some of those mistakes that we've made, especially with some of these weirdo friends that we've had over the, the course of the last couple of decades. So as far as uh, any of the people that you guys have made friends with, have you guys had anything where you've seen a friend or somebody you went to high school with uh, years later and they're just not in a place in life that you expected them to be? Yeah. I mean, I think there's always going to be situations where people are not, you know, kind of what you remember them to be, or they end up in a totally different place where you expect them. Like I had a friend of mine who was a, uh, really close to me and he kind of took over for Keith <laughs> <He's> <laughs> <my> best friend <laughs> but like not not a bad way we're really good friends he's a great guy yeah. uh, but his uh, out of college he like went to uh, you know college nearby home and and just completely like he ended up getting a, a girl pregnant really early yeah. on right out of college and so they decided to get married and they 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 were in love with each other i guess but you know they got married and they stuck together for a while but they ended up divorcing and like he he was working at mcdonald's during his younger years and then he just kind of carried forward and then flash forward to like, <laughs> <laughs> like in, the, in the college i come out of college and like it's like two or three years after that i drive in by and i go to the mcdonald's near our house yeah. And there's there he is working at oh the drive-through, and I'm like, I'm like, like, hey, what's what's going on? You still work here? He's like, yeah, yeah, I still work here. I'm a manager now, and he, like oh, he wow. proceeded to just work his way up the chain, and now he works for the owner of multiple franchises. Wow! But at the same time, you're still like, you know, you you tend to yeah, everybody tends to think McDonald's, you know, it's not like a high paying career, long term career. It's just kind of stop yeah. through high school years or something like that but he made it into that but mm -hmm. over the years i've been back and forth i've seen him a couple of times they're always generally at a mcdonald's <laughs> <laughs> he's handing you your fries yeah, he's uh, handing me food and stuff i'm like oh you still work here yeah that's great do you get free wow. big macs <laughs> <laughs> you know if i really wanted to exploit that relationship i probably could i probably could get away with that <laughs> Like one time, we were, we were, I was just like, you know what? I really need to, need to reach out to him. So I did. And we were like, let's go out to eat or something. We're going to hang out. I want to go to McDonald's? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He did. He did. He was like, let's go to McDonald's. <laughs> and, then, and then one time, a time I was at McDonald's, I think I was like studying. This is like, well, this is just in the last few years. Yeah. I was reading or something while, while uh, uh, drinking some coffee at a McDonald's. And he walks in. And he's mm. like, oh, let me get you something, you know. So he's very kind, very yeah. helpful, very friendly. But nevertheless, it's just like, it's weird to be in a McDonald's like, and see your what, friend there. I seem to remember your mom. I'm sorry, I should say. I, yeah, I mom to goes to McDonald's all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Surprising. <laughs> <laughs> she could always run into him. Yeah. She really, I mean, he, he really liked her. I mean, again, yeah. total 100% stand-up guy from what I yeah, remember I and what I saw. But... You know, it's still it's kind of one of those things when you run into people from your past. You're just kind of like you're expecting them to be all either at the same level as you or higher than you. You just, yeah. or at least you know, you think, hey, you know, McDonald's is a career choice that not many take. You can obviously make some money at, it, especially when you get in that. But it just yeah. doesn't fit that mold in your mind right. that you think. You know? Yeah. Yeah. 
So to sum up what we've learned today, the spleen took advantage of mentally challenged people until Jesus turned his life around. Don't start fires at school unless you're ready to get beat with a telephone pole. The invisible boy would be the last person we would go to in order to hide our identities. The Blue Raja is extremely good with keeping the Bongs family names correct. And anyone named Keith is an instant no-go for your children to befriend. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you on the next Mystery Men podcast. So to sum up,